Side Hustle Show 282. This is the $60,000 a year part-time blog. If you want to start a blog of your own, check out my free video series at blogstartercourse.com. I'll show you step-by-step how blogs make money and how to get your site online for less than you might think. What's up? What's up? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show because every expert was once a beginner. This is Brett Lindenberg, who works full-time as a marketing consultant, describing how he landed on his profitable blog idea. I was looking at just a whole bunch of different business ideas. Really, it was like across the board, like, should I start a blog? Should I start a website? Looking for things that I could start part-time, maybe start doing it on weekends, but that also didn't require like tons and tons of investment. And I started kicking around the idea of Oh, maybe I could do one of these food trucks. You know, that seems like something that you could operate on the side. So I kind of just started exploring that idea. And when I did, I realized, you know, back in 2013, there was literally almost no information about starting a food truck business online. So thinking he might want to start a food truck himself, Brett set out to learn all he could about the food truck business and fill the void of information he found online by interviewing other food truck owners and possibly documenting his own journey as a food truck startup. Today, foodtruckempire.com, that's Brett's site, is a $60,000 a year side hustle. Stick around to hear how Brett got the blog and podcast off the ground, how he built his audience and subscriber base and how the business makes money today. And uh, here's a spoiler alert. He ended up not starting a food truck of his own, instead opting for the lower overhead online business model. Notes and links for this one, plus a free downloadable PDF highlight reel with all of Brett's top tips from the call are at sidehustlenation.com slash Brett. It's B-R-E-T-T. Now, Brett had a background in marketing, but he still had a lot to learn about running an online business. And that's where our sponsor, Skillshare.com, comes in. Skillshare is the online learning community with over 19,000 classes in marketing, business, social media, and tons more. Basically, any skill you need to get your side hustle off the ground or take it to the next level. These are practical, on-demand classes taught by industry experts and insiders. And how about this? Side Hustle Show listeners get two months of unlimited access for just 99 cents. Hit up Skillshare.com slash side hustle to claim that deal. Check it out at Skillshare.com. Dot com slash side hustle. I'd also like to thank TextExpander.com for sponsoring this episode. Text Expander helps you communicate smarter and faster and will basically make you feel like a productivity ninja. How it works is you create your own keyboard shortcuts or snippets for things you type or copy and paste all the time, like email addresses, URLs, proposals, directions, uh, answers to FAQs. I've got dozens of these set up and they save me a ton of time. It works on Windows, Mac, iOS, and you can even share snippets with other people on your team to power up their productivity too. I think you're going to love it. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast for 20% off your first year. That's textexpander.com slash podcast to start working smarter today. I'll be back with my top takeaways from this chat with Brett after the interview. Ready? Let's do it. With my experience marketing, I just kind of like figured out that, oh, okay, you know, there's quite a bit of search volume for like food trucks for sale. And, you know, there's people looking up keywords about this type of business, but there's not much information there. Maybe I could start a blog on the topic. I'm curious what you were using to gauge that keyword volume, that kind of market demand interest. I don't remember the exact tool. It might have been like the PPC search volume estimator tool in Google AdWords. But I just remember like... Terms like food truck for sale, I don't know how many there were a month, 36,000. And then there were a lot of variations around that too. And that kind of got the ball, you know, got me thinking that that might be a good market to serve. Okay. From one, the standpoint of like, okay, this could be a website that has legs on its own. And number two, like I'm kind of doing this as, as market research in case I want to start my own food truck. Yeah, I was uh, trying to kill two birds with one stone for sure. I guess I would also say just the basic idea of the site isn't really what it is now. Like now we've got a listing area where people can list their food trucks for sale and things like that. Like, And there's a lot of different categories of content. But I started it out really, really simple, just kind of based on John Lee Dumas's model uh, from Entrepreneur on Fire. I was just like, I'll just start a blog. I'll interview people, 
and I'll publish the content on a blog and a podcast and, and just go from there. So like my initial idea and what I did right away was, was very, very simple and definitely looks different back then than what it does now. Okay. But that got you started. That got you off the ground. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, if you're thinking that this niche in this timeline sounds familiar, you're not alone. So around the same time, Pat Flynn from smartpassiveincome.com started a public niche site project in the food truck space called foodtrucker.com. So I asked Brett, well, you know, who had the idea first and what his initial reactions were? Probably about two or three months after I had published the site. So, you know, super new blog still, you know, barely got it out. It maybe had eight posts total on there. I read this announcement on uh, Pat Flynn's blog, Smart, Smart Passive Income, that uh, he was going to be doing his next niche site in the food truck space. And he, it was kind of interesting to see him kind of go through his thought process. And I was really, really surprised to see that he had been doing keyword research too. And like our thought process for why that market could work was super, super similar. I think we were even looking at like some of the same keywords. And I just remember seeing that the first time and just being like, oh crap, like <laughs> this sucks. Like I, you know, finally found this great, cause I did, you know, I, I told you before I had tried like a few blogs that worked to, to varying degrees of success. And I was like, oh, I finally found this great magical market. And now like Pat Flynn's going to come in and just like waste me. <laughs> <laughs> so so that was, I would say, like my initial uh, kind of gut reaction right away. Two minutes later, or, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes later, whatever it was, I kind of started thinking like, well, you know, there, there's got to be like some good things that like with this too, right? Like at least there's another like really smart person, somebody that's had way more success than me, like picking the same market and kind of thinking in a similar way that I did. Well, I'm glad you stuck with it too. And it's kind of goes to show there's, there's room for more than one entry into a market. And, uh, and thanks for clearing the air that, Hey, you had the idea first and you know, <laughs> see, you know, cool to see you guys are going to go going through that same research process to say, I think there's a demand here. I think there's a void in the information that's out there and I'm going to try and fill it uh, as best I can. So I think that's, I think that's pretty cool. Do you think, you know, now with the benefit of almost five years of hindsight, did, having him do that site, foodtrucker.com is his site. Do you think that helped you or hurt you? You know, I don't think it really mattered at all, honestly. Pat is obviously like, he's super influential and he's very well known in like our tiny little internet marketing world. But if you go out, you know, you step outside that to like food truck owners and like the audience that I'm trying to attract, like nobody knows who Pat Flynn is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, so I would say, I will say that like the only probably benefit that like he had with it is he gets interviewed all the time on a lot of different like authoritative blogs. And he's able to like, just mention like, yeah, food trucker is one of my websites. So I think like from that aspect of like acquiring links, getting press, I think that helped him out a lot just to like build the authority. And I, I think that was like an advantage on the other side of the coin too. He's got like a whole big enterprise of like other sites that I would say, you know, have a lot more value to him. And like that is going to take his time a lot more than like this one little food truck website sure, that sure, sure, has sure. a topic about. So being the smaller guy was probably able to focus more on like, the language and like the needs of like what people want uh, versus maybe like what he's able to do. Cause he's got like a bigger opportunity to, to work on than like the food truck space. Yeah. The, the reason I ask is like, I had kind of a similar reaction when Chris Gillibo started the side hustle school podcast early last year. I was like, Oh man, okay. come on, you know, that's my, you're, you're encroaching yeah. on my turf here. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> ended up being, you know, a huge benefit. I mean, he just had such a big audience and, and brought a lot of new people into kind of the podcasting fold, I think. And, and I saw yeah. a big spike in terms of the exposure of the podcast during that time. So I'm grateful for it. And I think a rising tide can lift all boats in that case. Okay. So you're starting out content creation strategy wise is uh, you're interviewing food truck owners, John Lee Dumas, entrepreneurs on fire style. You're publishing that on the blog and on the podcast, or, or there's a food truck empire podcast too. 
What strategy I've used a lot, and I mean, you, you use this similar strategy on your site too, is interviewing someone, getting like really, really good high quality information from them, and then publishing super detailed show notes about it that helps solve a problem on a particular topic. So like one interview I'm thinking of just off the top of my head that I did, a, uh, we did a series with a food truck owner on was writing a business plan. Writing a business plan, frequently searched topic. It's a good, you know, informational topic on the, the food truck uh, market. So basically, I will interview a guest about the topic that I am trying to uncover, and then I'll put together like a really detailed post that outlines what we discussed. And I, I think that can a lot of times really help cut down how much research you have to do on a specific topic. So that's kind of the approach that I've used for. 90 plus percent of the content on the site, I'd say. Okay. So you're not just interviewing for the sake of interviewing. It's more like you're going into it with a specific topic in mind. How did you come up with your business plan? How did you set up your mm -hmm. kitchen? How did you yep. paint the outside of your thing? I don't know what else would you know, be. Absolutely. Yeah. Those are probably all topics we've covered at one point or another. Okay. okay. Actually, painting a food truck, that's one of the next posts that's coming up. So. <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> Has that shifted over time or has it been, do the interviews still kind of provide the main fuel for the site? Interviews continue to play a really, really huge role in developing the content for the site. I will say, and this is probably something for like later on in the conversation, I do want to like expand the topics that we talk about. The food truck market is a super, super narrow market. It's only so big. Uh, so I'd kind of like to broaden out into like related topics. Uh, so some things that we've done in the past is like, you know, how to start a hot dog cart business. We've done like a whole series on that. And uh, what we're working on now is more like frozen yogurts, like how to start an ice cream shop, how to start a froyo business. How to, uh, so we're kind of continuing to expand that way into like different related food business topics okay. to start, you know, getting to a wider audience. But I would say, I mean, the same strategy holds true is just kind of trying to find somebody that really knows about a specific topic, pulling that information from them, putting it into a format that people can read easier and access easier and that sort of thing. But I would say, I will say too, on top of the content creation strategy, I think a lot of people approach interviews just for the content or to, you know, get a post out. But I think it's a one thing that's overlooked a lot, too, is it's a really good way to start relationships with somebody within the industry that you're trying to become an authority in. And I think that really gets overlooked. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've heard from people who would say, look, I would continue doing the show even if nobody was tuning in just for that one benefit, for that relationship benefit. Absolutely. How long are you working on this thing before you start to see some traction in terms of listenership, traffic to the website, stuff like that? Within that first six, seven months, probably didn't make any income at all from the blog, which I don't think is probably an un characteristic or unusual story from folks that you've had in the past on here. Moving ahead to 2014, still, I would say like a massive grind, spent a lot of time interviewing people, spent a lot of time putting together content, putting together podcasts and doing interviews is actually a lot of work just to book people to talk to, create the content, that sort of thing. So I'd say like 2014 was just more of a grind, more of the same. I would say after a full year it did generate some income, maybe like five thousand uh, bucks total for the year. Okay, we'll get into how it, you know what's ringing the cash register for you. I was curious, like, was that enough? Well, obviously it was to keep you going. But like, did you ever have the the thought of throwing in the towel and say like, this is not worth it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely thought about throwing in the towel. I think there's always like the question of like, am I doing the right thing? Like, is the, does this thing have a chance to be what I think it can be? And I just kind of kept doing it. And I would say part of the reason I probably kept doing it during that first year and a half was just because it was like, well, I don't really have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wish, it, I wish I had a like better explanation than that, but it was just like, well, I don't have any other really good like 
website ideas right now. Um, you know, I'm just going to keep kind of focusing on this. And I did, you know, I think you've got to enjoy the process of it to a certain extent. I like went to school for journalism back in college. So like I always had a passion for like just publishing content really no matter what it was about. So I think I think you got to rely on your interests and just know that it's going to be a bit of a long journey. But yes, I did consider stopping doing it <laughs> over that time. And that's what it is. It is journalism in a way. It's saying I'm doing these interviews, trying to pull out the best tidbits, the best nuggets from it and, mm -hmm. and publish that stuff. To, so it helps people. Absolutely. So the first five grand, what what were you selling? How Where's the money coming from? So the first five grand, I would say like one of them was, you know, the tried and true. How do, how do I make money off my blog? Well, let's throw some AdSense ads up on there. <laughs> sure, sure. So that was part of it. The other kind of interesting thing that I did at the first half of the year, and I've never really heard of anyone else use this as a way to monetize before, but I created a directory on the site that listed different food truck manufacturers and just kind of like related businesses that were helpful to, you know, a prospective food truck owner. It was just like a blog post description describing a certain company and then like a static HTML page that linked up to, you know, these different companies. Okay. Uh, but what I did was I reached out to all these companies that I added to the list and I was just like, Hey, like wanted to let you know, we added you here. Like, let us know if, you know, there's any other information or, or updates that we should make to the, to the listing that you have. And Oh, by the way, like, if you want, you can fill out this form and you can be like a premier listing on our site. And if you do that, we'll give you uh, an interview on the site that'll be posted on your page and you'll get like a little badge essentially next to your listing. Like that was it. <laughs> so I sent out that email to like maybe 40 businesses and I think three or four within the first, you know, couple weeks of sending it out paid $300 to get uh, this update upgraded enhanced listing for a year on my site. So that was kind of like, AdSense and doing that premium listing offer were like my first two monetization strategies. Okay, interesting. So targeting the manufacturers of food trucks for that. And then while the site itself is targeting the owners or the soon to be owners. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Anything else on the monetization front? Yeah, you know, it was only like five thousand so dollars. That pretty much <laughs> was all it took. It was enough to keep you going. You know? get up there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I and I should say too, I, I would say like the majority of like that five thousand dollars probably came in like the second half of twenty fourteen. We're talking probably like the first full year. I would say I wouldn't. I didn't make more than a thousand dollars off the site. I would also just on that last uh, comment. I mean, I I think within like the directory part, I think that's like. If you're like a new blogger and you're just starting out, I like I've never heard of really anyone else. I, I know that there are other websites that offer like premium listings, like, you know, like an Angie's List type site. I think maybe Yelp does something similar, but I, I don't I feel like a lot of bloggers don't do that. I think there's a lot of markets that if you're like just looking to like make your first kind of like few hundred bucks doing some sort of a specific directory like that can still work even in 2018, even though it's like so old school. I just tested that out on a, on a kind of a directory style site that I run, it, mostly because people, companies were reaching out to me. They're like, dude, can we just pay you to put us at the top? And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, after enough people ask, you're like, well, yeah. fine, I, I can figure out how to make that happen. And they're like, sure, sign up here. And so now it says yeah, featured listing, sponsored listing at the top, similar to what, you know, Google will do, what Yelp will do, what everybody does. You know, it's like, hey, you yeah. can, here's the organic listings and here's the ad at the very top. Right. Exactly. I mean, I... Like I see so many uh, like healthy food bloggers, for example, right? Like there's tons of like, hey, here's how to make food, but also be healthy, that sort of thing. Like I feel like you could just all the products that you use anyways and that you feature, just start like a featured directory section where you list like the healthy products that you like to use and just kind of like des describe the company, interview the company that makes whatever product you have. And if you do like do that for a little while, do some outreach you make the price point reasonable, a lot of people will take you up on it for like a few hundred bucks yeah. um, without even thinking about it. Did you end up creating, you know, a, a paid guide for the 
wannabe owners operators to say like here's the here's the ultimate guide to how to start a food truck or anything like that uh yeah so i've got an email list i've got a few different i guess lead magnets we'll call them and lead magnets just being like a thing that a reason why somebody would sign up for your email list something that you're going to usually give away so yeah i've got a few different ways of collecting an email uh list and that becomes more important on the monetization side in the coming years. Yeah, absolutely. The one on the homepage right now is a, the five ways successful food truck owners increase profit without okay. increasing customers. And so, yeah, lots of different, lots of different ways into mm-hmm. the food truck empire email list there. Yep. So what is that? Is there a, you know, a concerted autoresponder, you know, automated funnel sequence behind that to sell something or what's, what's, what do you do with that email list? What I've been doing, and this is uh, like, so we've got like a couple of different things. So, so one, there's a, a small, just, you know, a food truck ebook. It's called Your First 365 Days on a Food Truck. And it's a book that I put together with a, with a food truck owner just describing like his first year operating a food truck and like what he went through and things he focused on. So that sells for $14. And as soon as you sign up for the freebie, like we'll make that offer on the thank you page of the opt-in and then also reference it, you know, during this email sequence that we send out. So, so that's one of them. And then also uh, two times per year, we have a, a larger, it's called a food truck Academy. So that's more like the master training class. So that sells for $297. And that actually, we, we, I've thought about in the past of doing it uh, as like a full blown like video course, but what we've done instead is we actually launch the course and do a launch two times per year. And then we hold the class live with a food truck owner who teaches people live online how to uh, start their own food truck basically. Uh, And then we do that on Google plus that's kind of like the core bigger offer. But like I said, we only offer it like two times a year just to preserve that like live component. And I know just talking about like food truck empire versus food truck R, like the food truck R has a similar product uh, to that, but it's not live. And I just have found like, cause the first time we did it, the food truck Academy, we, we like, I wasn't sure if anybody would even want to do it or if anybody would purchase it or anything like that. So I just, connected with someone that I had interviewed in the past and was just like, Hey, do you want to try and launch like a food truck course with me? You know how to run a food truck. You know, everything about it. You're a good teacher. Like he was very like articulate, you know, to interview. So I thought he'd make a good teacher too. So we decided to host those live just to try it out for the first time. And then we just kept doing it live after that because the response just from like the people that signed up was just so much better. I feel like than if we didn't do a live class. Like there's just something about like logging on on a weekly basis for an eight week time period and people can ask questions. And there's just like a certain energy there that I feel like couldn't be replaced by like a recorded class. Don't get me wrong. Like we still have videos that we recorded that like go over like the details of certain topics and like chapters and like written content too. But like we still have preserved that live piece, which is good from a customer standpoint, I think. And that's why I've kept it. But it does make uh, sales maybe a little bit more challenging just because we don't have like our main featured product to sell at all times. <laughs> okay, okay. So the one people could buy at all times is the $14 ebook and then twice right. a year we'll do the Food Truck Academy. Right. That's crazy. That's awesome. You're being able to create this product in an area where you're like, you've developed this authority, this expertise, but it's like, you're not doing the thing itself. Like you're not operating the food (laughs) truck. So, Hey, why don't we partner with the guy who is, I think that's a really interesting way to go about it. What's you guys, I imagine you guys split revenue with this guy. Yep, exactly. Uh, we just do a revenue split based on the sales. Like I'm personally still involved in the class. Like I could technically probably just hand it off to him and he could run all the classes, but I kind of like act as like the facilitator on the classes just to like organize questions and like, you know, kind of tee up the questions to him and that sort of thing. Uh, just cause it, it can kind of like if anybody that's held an online class by themselves before, it can just be like very overwhelming if you don't have 
helper if you're like the only person that has to answer every single question. <laughs> yeah. Well, anytime you're trying to do something live too, it's like, oh, you got you to monitor the chat and you got to deliver your thing. And it's right. Uh, yeah. So, so that's why we've decided to keep it live, I guess. So, so those are really, yeah, the, the two kind of core products. And we've added some smaller little eBooks in there too, that get a few sales here and there. But um, those are kind of like the two main products that we, you'll get sold if you're on the list. Okay. How many on the email list today? I want to say a little over 30,000 active. Wow. That's huge. Man. Everybody wants to start a food truck. <laughs> there are a surprising number of people that want to start a food truck. I, I will say too, like there's a lot of different variations of a food truck. So you could maybe, you know, you could start a push cart, you could start a hot dog cart, you know, we'll still get some of those people that maybe want to start a cart instead of a truck. Even, even like restaurant people will get people like, Oh, I wanted to start a restaurant, but I can't afford a restaurant. So I'm, you know, food truck is like the next backup plan. So, so yeah, th there ends up being like a wide swath of people that end up coming in there and wanting to learn. Interesting. That's huge, man. 30,000 uh, people on the email list. Congratulations on, yeah. uh, on building that. Yeah. Thank I'm you. Curious, what's driving traffic for you today? Good old, uh, Google organic organic search is definitely the number one referral for traffic to the site. And that, you know, just kind of, again, comes back to the, the blocking and tackling of it all <laughs> and publishing content over years. And, you know, I mean, just making sure that I'm always trying to find like new topics with search volume, right? So we can like capture that over time. So that's, that would definitely be the number one source. And then number two, source of traffic is just direct traffic actually to the site. And I think you probably see this on your site too, Nick, but I feel like just being in the same market and publishing content in that market for like a few years and talking to people over the years and you kind of get this like snowball of like people that just know about you and start sharing your site word of mouth, that sort of thing. Uh, yes. So that's actually the number two driver of traffic to the site right now. Okay. And I imagine that's a, a strong signal to Google too, that if people are just typing in your mm -hmm. URL, that's a strong sign right. you know, for regular, for other related searches. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about the course launch and, you know, do, um, I'm just curious, like, Hey, doors are open, click <laughs> it by now. Like, what, you know, what is there a specific launch sequence that you do or when's the next one coming up? Like you got any plans to do something different this time around or, or what's going on there? I've actually got the sales process pretty tuned in right now. Is that the lion's share of the revenue or is there just something else that's really ringing the cash register? I would say like the training products is about half of it, half the revenue. And then uh, like advertising is the second half. It's, okay. it's a pretty close 50-50 split. As far as launching it, we kind of do like the typical launch process um, where we will, the, well, the first thing I do, and I, and I always do this, is send out an email letting people know that they can apply to be in the next Food Truck Academy class. And that basically is just a simple email letting them know like, hey, we're going to be launching soon. If you want to be one of the first to know, fill out this form and also tell us the reason why you're thinking about joining. So that gets quite a few responses of people. And I think it's nice to actually get them to like state the reason why they want to join. That way you just kind of like get a sense of and I mean, I know the reasons why now, but like especially the first time that I launched the course, I didn't really, I wasn't really sure like all the reasons why people exactly would want to join. I knew to start a business, but like some of it could be like financial reasons. Some people could have already started their truck, but the business just isn't working out for them. And now they're looking for like consulting help almost. So that's like something that I've like found out by asking those questions too. So that's kind of the first step in the process. And that gets you on like an early list to find out when the course opens. Anyone that submits through that form, they'll get uh, notified early, like maybe three or four days early of like the rest of the list, like when the course is going to open up. And I always make sure also to like, we usually cap the class at like about 40 ish, 50 people, just because like, I don't know, we could get into like details of this a little bit, but we always provide like direct feedback to people on business reviews. So there's only like so many people that we can help. But so that's like the first step of the process is just getting people on basically an early notification list, send it out to them in advance, let them know that it's open. 
then from there, they just go to like a straight landing page with a ton of information about the course. So at this point, you know, I've ran the course a few times. So I've got testimonials and audio testimonials of people that have taken the course in the past that have shared their experience and also like links up to like their food truck that they're running now. Right. Oh, so nice. Yeah. So there's a lot of like really good stuff in there. That's just like, Oh, okay. And especially for like $300, well, 297 is what we sell it for. So, I mean, like you kind of get on this page, it's really detailed. There's a lot of information about the course. There's interviews, uh, audio interviews pasted in there with people that have taken the course. They're, they're successful. They're currently operating the business. It's very legit because it is legit at this point that yeah, so many yeah. people have gone through it and, and seen success and, you know, said really nice, good things about the process. So, um, I think that component of it too has helped. So yeah, I mean, it's a very basic sales process, just kind of like notifying when it's open, sending them to a landing page. And then we do, you know, some follow-up sequences along the way that are just super basic, like, Hey, we open it up to like everybody on the list. Uh, and you usually say how many spots are available left just to create that like urgency scarcity a little bit. And then, yeah, that's really is, is as basic as that with, um, the email follow-up. But I should say also too, over this time though, after somebody signs up for the email list initially, there's like a sequence of just educational content that comes out and is delivered to them. It's usually like different interviews that I think are like really, really good that I like direct people to. So, I mean, you got to think like some of these people have literally been on the list for like six months, a year. And then I like hit them up, you know what I mean? With just this basic sales message out of nowhere. And I, and I think that's, kind of why it works. And I think also too, just having a live class, like it's like, you have to buy it now because we only do two a year. And like, once the class starts, it's, it starts like, it's not like a video course where it's like, I'm taking it down at the end of the day. <laughs> right. It's not like this, this manufactured <laughs> yeah, yeah, scarcity. Like false scarcity. Yeah. Like it's like, it's, it's happening now. Like you're going to be able to ask a, a food truck owner, any question you want, you're going to be a, a, into a network of people that are also starting this very specific type of business and it's just going to be, it's going to be a fun and it's going to be like super educational time and like a no brainer investment for 297 bucks. Who are you using for your email service provider? I am old school and um, I've used Aweber for a long time, which when you get up to like 30,000 plus people, it kind of starts to get expensive on a monthly basis. Right now I'm using Aweber but I also have um, a platform called Kajabi that I use to like, basically it helps sell uh, my product and it like hosts like the Food Truck Academy product and does like the, the sales through there. They also have email marketing. So I've started like porting my list over to Kajabi and I'll probably be before the end of the year totally on Kajabi for email. Okay, cool. Yeah, nothing, nothing but love for Aweber. That's what I use for years and years. So nothing, uh, nothing but good things about those guys. And then Kajabi is K A J A B I. A couple of people have recommended that for membership software. I didn't realize they did email as well. So that's very cool. So you said the other half of the revenue side was advertising. Is that you know including these you know premium listings? Is it still AdSense or are you, are you selling like direct? banners or I don't know what else. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no, great question. I mean, I, yeah, I still definitely have AdSense on there. I mean, you know, like 400 bucks a month is like an average month from AdSense right now, you know, maybe 50 bucks higher, maybe 25 bucks lower somewhere in that kind of range. I will say this, like, I don't have AdSense on like every page of the site. Right. And I don't do things like stick it above the fold. Uh, or like near the top of the content or anything like that. Like if I could do like all of these very simple things and I could like get, you know, I could get my AdSense revenue up um, if that was the primary goal. But what really I've had better success with is um, I would say like one thing that's important is to just kind of like know what market you are in, right? So like, for example, I'm in the, the food truck space. So like if somebody buys a food truck, that's a really, really big investment. You're talking like, $50,000, $100,000, $150,000 maybe even to purchase a customized food truck from a builder. So, you know, it doesn't take a lot of advertising return to be able to make a no brainer kind of investment with, with a website like mine. So actually how 
I've gotten a large chunk of the revenue for the site is just by working out direct advertising arrangements with two food truck ma- manufacturers primarily. And they're, you know, on different sides of the United States so that there's no conflict of interest. And then I've just made sure that like to limit my advertising from other food truck manufacturers. Like I only use the two that I have, like as long as they're with me, you know, I have no intentions of, you know, bringing on new food truck manufacturer advertisers or anything like that to sort of compete with that. Um, So that's helped, I, I think like that exclusivity. And then also just like the awareness that like, You know, I'm not like a regular food blogger that's, you know, just trying to work on page views and, you know, sell a, like a little food product that's $7 at the grocery store, right? Like the the audience that I'm targeting is going after a much, much larger purchase. That's interesting. You know, the, the advertisers, they have a lot to gain by getting in front of this audience. And it's funny to see uh, Battlefield Ford on here. I actually spent a day, maybe a couple of days, as a <laughs> like job shadow down there when, oh, I, was, when I was a recent uh, graduate working for Ford uh, out, of, out of D.C. So I, oh, I man, remember that's Manassas, awesome. Virginia. And I was like, what was the battlefield here? And then, of course, I got a, <laughs> a nice uh, lecture on the Civil War and, and oh, the okay. Yankees and all that stuff. <laughs> that's good because I uh, didn't really understand the reference myself. So. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> well, my my uh, engineer, my field engineer, was uh, one of these guys who was into the reenactments. Like, so he would go out there, and he he kind of like was bad mouthing the guy. Like, there you know, there's other guys who go out there, and they've got like coolers full of beer and all this stuff. Like, that's not a real reenactment. Like, we're doing with nothing they didn't have in 1861. I'm like, <laughs> okay, man, you're hardcore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he was all about it. You can do it Very without cool. Coors Light. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dude, you know, it's 95 degrees and humid. Brett, what's uh, tell me about your your time investment these days? Like, I know you're working full time still. Like, how much? Hour, how many hours are you putting into this thing uh, every week? I mean, time investment is still significant. I mean, I'm like I said before, I want to continue to grow the site. And I think it's, you know, I've still got a lot of opportunity, especially when you think about like the larger food business topics that we could cover on the site. I think, you know, it could be a lot bigger than what it is now. Right now, I mean, I would say like a good average would be about 15 hours a week. It's significant. I am like a morning person. So that's kind of when like the hours that I like dedicate most of the time is like just waking up at like five and like kind of grinding those first am hours during the week is kind of where I budget. But, um, is that on content creation or what are you doing during, during those hours? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I try to do. Like blog writing, podcast editing, anything like that. I'm in the process and I've had some like help with this in the past, like having like part-time writers to uh, help me out. And I'm, you know, just brought on a guy that's going to be doing one post a week for me, really high quality stuff. And he operates another blog. So I know like how good of a writer he is. So hoping to basically hire on like one or two people this year to, to help with that, to do like a post or two, you know, probably like a post a week, maybe a post every other week, but I'll, but I still plan to contribute to the site too, and keep adding it on and, and building it that way. And I will say this too, like I, I'm not really super, super technical. So I outsource any, like I don't do any blog design. I don't do any like WordPress work, so to speak. I always, I got like a guy that helps me with that. So yeah, don't mess around with stuff. It, just a recipe for frustration. If, <laughs> yeah, it's so, not... yeah, it's so much cheaper just to hire someone else to do tech work it's insane to try to learn it yourself <laughs> yeah it's like i have beaten my head against more more walls and more monitor screens than i probably care to admit but i'm trying to get better about you know doing the delegation thing That's okay same. so um you mentioned broadening into other food markets bringing on some help on the writing side the content creation side anything else on the horizon for you this year yeah like you said get to a wider audience reach more people the only other thing i'm thinking about for this year is like, obviously, uh, Amazon associates, it seems like there's an opportunity there, especially if you've got like a decent amount of traffic to your site. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of people are having success there. I think I'd like to maybe dabble in that. And then, uh, speaking with ad thrive next week, which I've heard a lot of really great things about too. I, I haven't decided if that's something I'd really necessarily want to pursue, but I kind of want to just see what could potentially look like as an option, especially as I, you know, kind of grow into a wider market just to see what, 
opportunities it holds, but that's pretty much it. I'm trying to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible this year. <laughs> yeah. There's always more that you can go after and get done. So never, never a dull moment in, in the business, but Brett, appreciate you joining me. Foodtruckempire.com. If you want to go check him out, see what he's got going on over there. Let's wrap this thing up with your number one tip for side hustle nation. I'm going to go back to just one of the things we mentioned before, just like interviews in general, you know, specifically your podcast video interviews. I just think it's a great way to start relationships. My big tip is if you're just getting started, like build a list of a hundred people or a hundred, you know, companies that you think would make good advertisers in your market, start interviewing those people or finding a way to feature them. Cause that's like a great way just straight off the bat to like get recognized and, and get noticed, especially if you happen to be in a space that isn't internet marketing related, uh, where there's a lot of people doing it. There's a whole bunch of markets out there where you could start a blog and you can start reaching out to some of these companies and they could be big companies and there's going to be nobody else doing what you're doing. So I think this approach and the approach that Nick is, you've taken on this site too, is a, a really huge opportunity that a lot of people aren't doing beyond the marketing or business space. I like that one that and make a list of <laughs> make a list of 100 companies, make a list of your dream 100. And it's a flattering thing to reach out to them and say, Hey, I want to interview you for my show for my site. And they're like, you know, a lot of times people will, will say yes to that. So Brett, I think that's a cool idea. Appreciate you sharing that. Thanks so much for joining me, man. Again, foodtruckempire.com and we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks for having me, Nick. Appreciate it. What's the most important skill for entrepreneurs and side hustlers? I used to think it was creativity. After all, you've got to create something before you can go out and find customers. But lately, I'm becoming more convinced that the most important skill is actually the meta skill of learning new skills. And that's where today's sponsor, Skillshare.com, comes in. Skillshare is the online learning platform with more than 19,000 classes taught by practicing experts. On Skillshare, you can learn everything from podcasting to social media marketing to ebook formatting, Google AdWords, you name it. There's a huge variety of subject matter on pretty much anything you'd want to learn. The bite-sized classes are perfect for professionals who want to advance their career and for side hustlers who want to expand the skills you need to grow your business. How it works is you get unlimited access to all these classes for a low monthly price. You never have to pay per class again. It's like Netflix, only for something that will actually help your business. It's all on demand and the catalog has some pretty awesome stuff. Now, the best part is Side Hustle Show listeners can try Skillshare for two months for just 99 cents. I think you're going to love it. Go to Skillshare.com slash side hustle to get started today. That's Skillshare.com slash side hustle for two months of unlimited access for just 99 cents. All right, my top takeaways from this call with Brett. Number one is interviews are powerful. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's a simple way to create content with intention that ranks in search, it builds relationships, it builds partnerships, and it builds your own authority and education in a space where you might not have that much to begin with. This is definitely one that I can attest to firsthand, but Brett's another example of how to strategically use interviews to build content, attract an audience, and build authority. So that's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two is to build that email list. 30,000 subscribers. You can probably sense my uh, sense of surprise during the interview because I had no idea that many people wanted to start a food truck. Brett has several lead magnets on his site and does a good job of converting visitors into subscribers. So what can you do on your site to get people to join so you can continue that conversation after they leave? This is the most important asset for so many businesses, and I can track almost to the day the inflection point that happened uh, for my business when I really started to focus on it. So that's takeaway number two, build that email list. Takeaway number three is to build multiple revenue streams. In the early days of Food Truck Empire, it was just AdSense, and that's totally fine. But as the site grew, Brett diversified his income sources into advertising options, the directory, the featured, you know, featured listings in his own products. And he continues to expand those too. So there are a lot of ways to go about this. But one thing you can do is see what other sites are doing either in the same space or different industries altogether and ask, how are they making money? Are they selling physical products? Are they hosting live events? Are they doing online courses? Are they doing consulting? Are they recommending affiliate offers? Now, I've found tons of ideas and inspiration just seeing what other businesses 
are doing and then pivoting those ideas to my own applications. So that's takeaway number three, build multiple revenue streams. So what do you think? Hopefully this chat with Brett has got you ready to get your blog off the ground or take you to the next level. Let me know what you think in the comments for this episode at sidehustlenation.com slash Brett. Again, B-R-E-T-T. While you're there, you'll also be able to download the free PDF highlight reel with all of Brett's top tips from today's call. That's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of the Side Hustle Show, where I sit down with a $950 an hour copywriter to evaluate the words on several listeners' websites. Don't worry, they volunteered for this red pen treatment so we could all learn and benefit. I'll see you then. Hustle on. Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com.